A reading from St. Mark's Gospel, first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And just as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now the grass withers and the flowers fade. But the living word of God will stand forever. Amen. Please be seated. Would you pray with me? God of glory, give us your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and revelation of all that is holy. Give us the spirit of your Son, that sacred power living within us. Give us your Holy Spirit that we might be daughters and sons, heirs of your kingdom. Amen. Indeed, these are two strange texts to be coupled together for the lectionary readings today. The first five verses of the book of the Bible speaking about the genesis of all that is. And it is linked with the baptism of Jesus by John in the Jordan River. And it is indeed, it seems, very strange when the two texts are thrown against the backdrop of our common assumptions about the beginning of it all, and about baptism. We become easily distracted by the ideas concerning Genesis, the beginning. Some say that God created all that is in six literal days. Albert Einstein insists that matter always was and will be. Stephen Hawking says, there was once before time a point of singularity, and from that point came the Big Bang, and all that is came into being, and the universe is expanding. And there are just as many opinions about baptism. Some say, through baptism, we are admitted to the club Jesus. 
It's similar to the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or the Chamber of Commerce. And we have Jesus rules that govern our club. Some say that baptism is fire insurance or a get-out-of-jail-free card like we used to have in Monopoly. Go straight to jail. You flash the card and you get out of jail free. Baptism becomes our proof of liability insurance if we are pulled over by the great cop God. For others, baptism is nothing but an archaic religious rite without substance or meaning except to be attached in some way to the historical church. When I was young, between the ages of 8 and 12, every Thanksgiving, my family would get into the family automobile and drive north over the northern Louisiana boundary line into southern Arkansas to visit my mother's mother's, my grandmother on that side. And they would come from the four winds, my relatives. It was more akin to a family reunion than a Thanksgiving dinner. Make no mistake about it, everyone who gathered there was very religious. My parents represented the Presbyterians there. My grandmother and my grandfather represented the Methodist. But my aunts and uncles, very many of them, represented the Baptist of the hard shell kind. And every year, during what would be for me the longest day of the year. Arguments about baptism would ensue. Here we are stuffed in a house too small for the 60 of us, too hot to breathe, and hot air would begin to flow. The Baptist among us would raise the issue that the Presbyterians and the Methodists had not truly been baptized because we had been sprinkled and not immersed. Furthermore, the Presbyterians and the Methodists, which included me, why we baptized children, so we were not truly baptized because we didn't know what was happening to us. What did I take from those arguments? Who cares? Biblical text flew around the room like a disturbed covey of quail bursting forth. And sooner or later, the verbal jousting would touch on the explosive subject of science and religion. Was it six literal days, or was there some evolution thrown in for good measure? It was, for me, a thanksgiving that turned into a crusade and a jihad all wrapped into one every year. And for this reason, I shy away from arguments concerning the hows of Genesis and the manner in which baptism is administered. Now, I realize that some care deeply about that, but I think arguments pale, especially when one considers the what and the why. The what of the genesis of life and the what of the baptism of Jesus. 
the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit was moving. And Jesus came up out of the water, and immediately he saw the heavens rip open, and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. There's a common connection here. The Spirit was moving. The Spirit descended. The Spirit moved over the deep. And the Spirit, that Spirit brought forth all of life, all things, by the same Spirit that also descended upon Jesus at his baptism. And the results? Let there be light. And it was good. The result? This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The result? Good and pleased. Make no mistake about it, these texts talk about the action of God, not our actions. It is about God, these texts are about God's action at the beginning of things. And it's interesting to note, the Bible begins in the beginning. The Gospel of Mark begins the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Both beginnings, both spirit, same spirit, same results, good and well pleased. And I find it ironic how anybody can argue about the how and when of things while forgetting the what and the why of things. I have to tell you this. There are some anecdotal material. Some anecdotal material is so good you've got to work it into a sermon somehow. Two sisters, three years old, four years old, attend their church and one Sunday, and they see a baptism. Impressive, and they hear the Trinitarian fo- formula. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Three days later, Mom notices all is quiet in the house. And as all moms know, when you have a three and a four-year-old, if things are quiet, things are about to erupt. No sound. She begins looking for her daughters. She goes to their rooms, and they are not in there. And as she is walking past the bathroom, she hears whispering, and then flush. Whispering, and then flush. What can they be doing? And she cracks the door open just a little bit to see. Her three-year-old is standing by the lever that flushes the toilet, and the four-year-old has the Barbie doll's boyfriend, Ken, upside down, dangling him above the toilet bowl. And they whisper, and then flush. And then she heard what they were whispering, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and in the Holy Ghost. In the hole he goes. They became confused about the last part of the Trinitarian statement. And when we argue to me over how we miss and miss the what and the why, the word in the whole, it goes. It was good and 
I am well pleased, is an expression of hope for creation. There was void, void and darkness. And the light was good. The, descent, the Spirit descended upon Jesus, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. You see, these two texts are about a revelation to the world. And a revelation means the uncovering of that which is not seen. That God, the God we follow, is a God that can create order out of the chaos. Who can bring forth light out of nothing. Now those of us who have experienced the waters of baptism, no matter when and no matter how, even those who have seen a baptism, though they themselves not be baptized, why, you have seen a revelation that speaks across the ages. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved son. Adopted though we may be, just as valid. Adopted by God. And I am well pleased. The beginning, whether it is the creation saga or the baptism of Jesus, is always about life and it's about hope. Life is good. And those who share in the sacrament of life, God loves us. More than we can even Put into words. That's why we have symbols. Because words defy us. And there was a pastor who received the call on a rotation basis to go and preach at a local mission at what they called Skid Row. He thought himself a gifted orator. In this place, this mission was one of those places that transients and homeless must endure a sermon in order to be fed and housed for the night, kind of like this church. And the pastor had taken it upon himself to memorize Rudyard Kipling's poem, If. And he began to deliver it with great fervor. And all those poor people wanted wanted something to eat and a, a warm shelter over their head. And with great passion, he launched into his recitation. If you can keep your head while all those about you are losing there. If you can trust yourself when all about you doubt you. If you can wait and not be tired of waiting. If you can be lied about and not deal in lies. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. And then he reaches the crescendo of this poem and he chokes out with great emotion. If you can fulfill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds of distant run, Yours is the earth and everything in it, in which more you'll be a man, my son. A tear in his eye, he pauses dramatically. And some guy in the back says, what if you can't? What if you can't? What if you can't master your dreams? What if you can't? Take triumph and disaster on equal footing. What if you lose your head when everyone else is keeping theirs? What if you can't trust yourself? What if you can't wait? What if your life is just a mess? And 
there was a time before time when all was chaos and all was dark and the Spirit of God moved over the face of the dark and God said, let there be light. This is the same Spirit that comes to us in our dark places comes to us creating order out of the chaos that we find in living life. There might be some of you today who say, my life is beyond repair. I have fouled it up so badly, there is no going home. And to those of you who might feel like that, I ask you this question. If God can create the beauty of a sunset and the glory of sunrise, if God can create the oceans teeming with life and the forest green and the leaves of the trees in that forest anointed with God's ornaments, the bird's of indescribable beauty. If God can do this out of nothing, out of chaos, how is it you and I can say our chaos is impossible to reach? It is beyond the reaches of God's ordering power and spirit. Must we not say with Mary as she did to the angel? Is not. Is anything impossible with the Lord? And really the remaining question for us today. If the power of God is available to each one of us. The question is not what we do, but what we allow. Will we allow that spirit that creates and descends into our lives? There is nothing so dark as the absence of God in the human soul. The Spirit of God from the very beginning awaits for you to open so that you may be more than conquerors through God who has loved us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.